it can be quite common to see correlations made in data that really are not true at all because the data was analyzed without detrending first. In many cases, data can increase in values for both the uh, X and Y values for both the dependent and independent variables because of some background effect, for example, uh, inflation in prices. So it's important to remove those background trends by detrending the data. And we'll see the impact of this in the following examples. This data table uh, consists of some x values which are then generated into b trends and a purely random value. So we do this for one trend and a random value for, this, for that trend, a second trend and its random values. And then we sum the two together so we have a trend plus random value and a, the trend, a second trend with a second random value. If we plot those values against each other, we can see that both the values rise over time. And this looks rather like a good relationship. And indeed, if we do a correlation coefficient between the two sets of data, we find that it correlates quite highly at 0.84, indicating that perhaps these two data point sets are indeed correlated. However, as we know as we constructed the data, that we built an underlying trend in underlying random data, that this probably isn't true. Now let's just plot the random data alone. This plot now shows the data where we've removed the trends from both the data sets and we can clearly see that there's no real relationship between either of them. The data does not correspond in any shape or fashion. And indeed, when we look at the Pearson correlation coefficient for the two data sets, it's very low, close to zero. And this is what we'd expect because we've deliberately constructed the data to be made of two random data sets summed with two uh, underlying trends to, to give the original uh, trending set. Now let's look at some real data, see what happens. So here I've taken some real data from the oil industry. We have, uh, for each of these years, we capture the oil price and the gasoline price. And we also, to make them plot on the same chart, we put a multiplier in so the gasoline price roughly matches the oil price. When we plot these two values against each other, we see that they have a very close correspondence, including these nice little peaks and dips. Now, if these are truly correlated, as they should be, then if we detrend the data, we should still get good correlations. So let's have a look what that looks like. So now we've detrended the data, we've removed the underlying trend by setting the start and end points for one case to be for one data series to be the same. And as we can see, the data points now still follow each other very, very closely. So we would expect that even the detrended data should have correlation coefficients fairly high. Let's see if that's true. So here is the correlation coefficient for the undetrended data, the first set that we had. And we see it's very high at 0.99, close to 1, as we do expect given that the lines are very close. But if we now look at the detrended correlation coefficient, it's still very high at 0.94. And therefore, we can say that there really is, it really is a true relationship between the data sets. And that's what we would expect. This is oil data and gasoline data. And of course, since gasoline is refined from raw petroleum, we would expect that the underlying cost of the oil would have some impact on the cost of gasoline. And as we can see, clearly is the case. So this is a good example where we need to understand that by detrending data, we can determine whether the correlations that are spurious due to rising values due to extraneous conditions such as inflation um, or other factors can be removed 
and we can still determine whether the relationship between the two data sets are in fact correlated or not. If they are, they are probably causative. In this particular case, we would expect that the rise in oil prices or the changes in oil prices will be reflected in the changes of refined products such as gasoline. So thank you for listening to this little piece. And if you'd like to learn more about doing trends and visualizing trends and how to create them out of data, uh, please go to my Udemy course that is listed below and uh, please join up. Thank you so much.